The first item on our agenda this, this evening is a food truck license application, but the applicant is not here. So we're going to skip over that and hope that that person shows up. And if they don't, then maybe we'll deal with that next week. Um, so then let's do other things. Uh, untimed items. Mr. Wald has for us a proclamation for the Amherst Historical Society's 110th anniversary. You want to tell us anything about that or read it or anything? It's interesting. It's, you know, we, we often think about the historical society, but don't realize how long it's been here. So it's been here uh, 110 years as of this week. And one of the founders, of course, was David Luminous Tower, who's a distinguished writer in her time, and then also is an acquaintance of Austin Dickinson's. Uh, associated with the VAR chapter and so forth. So the society wanted to, in, in an effort to increasingly to call attention to itself and its role in the community, thought a proclamation might be an appropriate way to do that. And it's outlined some of its contributions and you know, they hope we will honor them. Well, we got a couple minutes. Would you like to read it? Sure. <laughs> Whereas the Amherst Historical Society was chartered by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts 110 years ago by May 28, 1903, and whereas the society has operated the Simeon Strong House at 70 Amity Street in Amherst as a museum ever since, and whereas many members of the community have supported the society with volunteer efforts and contributions over the years, and whereas the society has benefited the community by collecting, preserving, and interpreting objects from Amherst's past, and whereas the society has opened the Simeon Strong House to the public to connect people to the town of Amherst its history and its culture, and whereas the society speaks for the preservation of the historic features of the town's buildings and landscapes, and whereas the society educates visitors, residents, and school groups about the town's heritage. Now, therefore, <coughs> we, the select board of the town of Amherst, hereby congratulate the Amherst Historical Society upon its 110th year anniversary, given at Amherst this 29th day of May, 2015. Thank you very much. Uh, questions or comments about the proclamation? And Mr. Hayden, how would you like to make the motion? Mr. I would Wall, like to move um, <laughs> our congratulations to the American Historical Society on its 110th birthday and let this proclamation, in fact, be ours. Thank you. Mr. Wald, would you like to second that? Second. <laughs> and for the discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 aye that Thank is you. unanimous. Three in favor, two absent. Okay. Um, let's do the change of manager for Bertucci's. Um, Bertucci's restaurant is having a change of manager, and as we've mentioned before, liquor licenses are extremely specific, and anytime you have a change that to the liquor license at all, that needs to come before the select board for approval. Um, yet there is a threshold for things that do or do not require a public hearing. This is not one of the things that requires a public hearing, and the select board decided not long ago that if it doesn't require a public hearing, we also don't require them to come before us. So this is a technicality of all technicalities. Uh, as Ms. Brewer likes to point out, this has already been approved by the police chief, so this is just here for us to make this final um, final approval of the change. So, Mr. Hayden, would you like to make that? I would move to approve the application of Bertucci's Restaurant Corporation doing business as Bertucci's Brick Oven Restaurante for a change of manager from Robert E. Wombolt to, I guess, yeah, I guess Wombolt, to Sean C. Jones. Um, they hold the ABCC license number 00240063. Uh, contingent on the Chief of Police review and approval, which we know we have. I thought we already had that. If yes. we don't, we it's will it's before it goes uh, out. My the understanding as of earlier today was that we were waiting on that. So this was okay. just to be safe. Very good. I understand. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Wald, would you like to second that motion? Second. Uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Three in favor, two absent. Do they still do their Thursday night fundraisers, do you suppose? Tuesdays. Tuesdays, Tuesdays actually. Yes. Yeah. Gosh, I hope so. Um, all right, we've done that. We've done change of manager. I um, don't have many motions, so we might as well talk about the upcoming meeting schedule. Um, you have on your desks a calendar which has in red proposed meeting dates. The most complicated part of this is June <laughs> because obviously we don't know when town meeting is going to end. Um, so I'm predicting that town meeting will end on the 10th, but I don't know if that's true, Mr. Resanti, if I could the 10th. <laughs> it's conceivable it could end the 3rd. Um, it will all depend on what happens tonight, so we'll know much more. What I'm proposing is that we, we 
approve both meetings on the 10th and the 24th. It's conceivable that if we end on the 3rd, that we can get all of the stuff done that we need to get done on the 10th and then not have to meet the 24th, but not necessarily. Um, so we kind of need both of those. Um, we have, so Mr. Wild is gonna miss the 10th, unfortunately. The 17th, uh, Mr. Musanti believes he would miss. We really can't have much of a meeting without Mr. Musanti. Uh, and both Ms. Stein and Mr. Wald will miss the 24th. So we're, we're in kind of tough shape for June, and I will try and um, accommodate all of that as, as we deal with, as we kind of distribute the agenda items, hopefully making the big agenda items for July 29th when we expect to have a, a full complement of select board members. So 10th and the 24th in June, I'm proposing uh, the 29th of July, that takes into account everybody's um, vacation schedules as they submitted to me. Um, last year we met only once in July and once in August plus the evaluation meeting, so this mirrors last year's meeting schedule. Our July meeting last year was kind of more in the middle of the month, but I don't think it necessarily makes a difference when we meet, especially since on the 29th we could have all of us, which would be good. Um, so, and we usually don't uh, do September at the same time we do these, but I particularly wanted to get on folks' calendars September 30th because the Kanagasaki mayor is going to be here then. So the Kanagasaki Sister City Committee has requested that we hold a meeting on that night so that those folks can be there, be part of our meeting. Um, so that, that was kind of a fixed date that we wanted to help plan around. So, um, so the other meeting I propose in September is the 16th. Um, we know that, and we did this last year, but that by having an abbreviated summer schedule, we recognize the fact that that might call for um, quickie meetings, we call them, to, uh, to deal with a, a parking request or a special liquor license that might come in between meetings. Um, but summer is kind of a blessedly quiet time, and we have been doing this together as a group for several years, and we do kind of have down uh, uh, what our summer looks like. So, and the main thing that we're doing during that time is the town manager evaluation process, plus, of course, everything else that comes up in the meantime. Um, but typically, that's not too much. So. The dates are as proposed, June 10th, June 24th, July 29th, August 19th and 26th, and September 16th and 30th. Anybody have any issues, questions about that? No. No? Mr. Hayden, would you like to make a motion? Can I just move to approve those dates? You can. Mr. Wald, would you second that? Sure. All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right, and that is unanimous. Three to zero, two absent. All right, let's see. Um, recent food truck issues, um, I've got that on there just for, uh, because this was an open issue at a meeting a couple of weeks ago, when the chamber's request came in for the taste of Amherst, um, as we were considering the request, Ms. Brewer brought up the fact that the letter asked whether or not um, food trucks could be prohibited from parking the perimeter of the common during that time. Um, and we were kind of in full town meeting mode and I said, you know what, just deal with the parking part of it, we'll put that off for future consideration. In the meantime, we realized that in fact, they did reserve the perimeter of the common anyway, so anybody who reserves that, that parking, that parking is not open to, to anyone. So that was, the chamber was looking for clarity on the fact, just confirmation essentially that since they, they have reserved that parking that it is not open to food trucks during that time, so. Hence, that is true. So just so folks know, that is the closure on that issue. Um, we also had an issue um, last week with a vendor who wanted to move during the fair, a sidewalk vendor, the haul all truck wanted to move during the fair to a different location, um, one of the approved sidewalk locations. Uh, and it, there had initially been some confusion in his discussions with the office. He knew he had to ask, but he thought he got permission from the office. Office staff thought that the regulations allowed him to move to a different place. They don't actually do that. The sidewalk ones all say that, um, mm -hmm. th that the location will be specifically approved by the select board. So. Uh, if he needed a change of location, then he needs to come and ask us for that. So that was um, that was then confirmed with him. I followed up with him, and, and we talked about that. So uh, just so folks know, that's kind of the status of things. We were supposed to have tonight our very first food truck license application under the new regulations, but uh, either that applicant is is lost or we had a miscommunication. So we'll see if we can reschedule that. Um, any questions or comments from anybody about food truck issues? 
just, just one, one quick, I want to note that as, uh, regarding the food truck and the taste of Amherst, that section three, part A1, the, says on street lunch carts may use any of these locations and move freely among them. So it's not that we're prohibiting um, the, the lunch truck from operating, just from parking uh, uh, in a reserved place. That's correct. And, uh, and part of the regulations is that no one is guaranteed a spot. I mean, if those, right. if those spaces are filled with cars on any given day, never mind an event, then yeah. you know, you're out of luck. Um, if you want a really permanent location, then you would get a storefront. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's and, the way it works. I have understood that now. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we're all kind of working through this. These are new new rules for the town, uh, a, a, new, um, a new food trend for the community. So uh, we're working through the details of this and the interpretations of it. And so I think we're doing okay. Any other questions or comments about food trucks? So? No. Okay. Then uh, logistical issues related to town meeting. Um, we have not been formally notified about um, any motions under the different articles. Um, Mr. Wald had mentioned to me that he's heard of a potential motion to refer Article 42, uh, which is the Echo Village um, article. Because we don't have a formal request, to, do, would we want to prefer, would we want to take a formal position or would we want to just not, <laughs> since we don't have a request? Uh, but at the select board's consideration, Mr. Hayden. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a suggestion that we not, for two reasons. One is we're not all here, Correct. and and second that um, a referral really it's a kind of a town meeting uh, request, and and I th think we can go on record saying we'd accept it, just not recommend it or not not have a position, not, you know, not take a position on it. So, how about that? Mr. Wall? I mean, I, I think, I'm not sure if it came to the other committees either, just that there was some talk about yeah. that. But okay. I mean, I might say. Nothing concrete to do. I don't know if you're hearing this correct. Okay. That's what Ms. Brewer has. Right. I might say that uh, sort of as a follow-on of the comments I made when we first heard that, the, the, uh, that article when it was brought to us, that I think I'd welcome it as well so we can, you know, do some things that I think huh. would help it. Um, other logistical issues for town meeting. Um, Ms. Stein, as we know, is not here. She has she has sent in um, two minority reports. Asked me to read those. Those are for uh, Part C of Article 24, the CPA article that will begin our considerations tonight. It will start with Part B. But so her minority report is for Part C. Um, additionally, Article 43, she has a minority report on. So I will be reading those on her behalf. Um, uh, just point of information for folks so we recognize that tonight is the 29th, Monday is the 3rd. We do not have the auditorium reserved for Wednesday the 5th. So we, if town meeting continues, of course it will continue beyond tonight, that would be on Monday the 3rd. It would then, if it continues again, if, might not, but <laughs> if it continues again, it would continue to Monday the 10th. Now, we don't even want to go there, but if it continued beyond that, we also don't have Wednesday the 12th. These are times that the auditorium was previously reserved for, um, for end of year school activities. So uh, the, the next couple of dates, as are noted at the bottom of your agenda, it's the 3rd, the 10th, the 17th, and the 19th. So by the 19th, we have a Wednesday reserved again, but so help us if we're still doing this on the 19th. <laughs> but you never know. So these things take as long as they need to take. Um, any other questions, comments, or issues regarding town meeting logistics? Mr. Misanti. Just an update. Uh, the CPA committee was meeting this afternoon at 5.30. I don't have an update from that meeting yet, but they were going to be informed by uh, Dave Zomack that the he will be recommending to the CPA committee to reduce the CPA request for Article 24C, which is the Southeast Street property, from 125,000 down to 60,000, and that's because of expected proceeds from selling a couple of the lots, two of the seven uh, parcels within that property, um, which has the effect of lowering the, the CPA match needed to effectuate preserving the property. So he's hopeful that the CPA will, the committee will uh, endorse that recommendation and, and, and work it into a motion this evening. Okay. 
Okay. We'll find out uh, by tomorrow. Soon, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. good. <laughs> All right, any other town meeting logistics or last minute issues to know about? All right, any key information updates from the town manager? Uh, no, I just wanted to let you know, uh, uh, town council at my request is continuing to review the uh, chapter 61 uh, uh, purchase, and, uh, purchase and sale uh, letter, a revised version uh, that was submitted at the end of April uh, related to the Coles property in North Amherst. Uh, we continue to be of the opinion that the revised uh, uh, purchase and sale is, does not constitute a bona fide offer. And we are in consultation with council uh, for the property owner to see what, if any, resolution there might be. Uh, but I just wanted to give you that kind of big picture. And uh, I think at the appropriate time during the discussion of Article 43, I would relay that information to town meeting members. Okay. Questions or comments about that? Anything else, Mr. Musanti, that you want us to know? Uh, no, I think I think we're I think we're in good shape. Okay. Uh, key information updates from select board members. Anything? <coughs> no basis. All right. Then, uh, since we don't have a lunch cart license applicant, and we don't have any other business, and we didn't bring our harmonicas, I, <laughs> would, I would move to adjourn. And without objection, this meeting adjourns at 6.27 p.m. And we will meet again. We will be meeting on Monday the 3rd. We will have a select board meeting uh, in this room at 6 o'clock. So 6 o'clock okay. on the 3rd. See you then. Thank you.